without further ado I want us to open to the first book of the Bible and if you don't know what the first book of the Bible that means you need to repent and if you don't know where to find the first book in the Bible you need help so please Genesis and if you have my Bible it's in the page of three uh, so Genesis and it's going to be very simple reading because it's going to be the first chapter of Genesis and the first verse of Genesis. So if you're there say Amen. If you're not there say um, wait for me. You can use your Version Bible app. God bless you. First book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. If you're watching us on live stream we love you. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching us on Facebook it takes a second. Click to share this video. Uh, tag a friend. And I know that you will be blessed in Jesus name. We had 10 people that gave their lives to Jesus through online yesterday and four that were healed. Come on. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says the following. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day and darkness He called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. This outlines the creation of what we know as the earth. It didn't start as beautiful as we see it today. It didn't start with birds singing. It didn't start with trees smelling roses. It didn't start with beautiful human beings walking around the earth. It didn't start with beautiful sea creatures, animals, oceans, the sky, the stars, the sun. How the earth began is how many people's lives even in this room are right now. The earth was void. The earth was dark and the earth was without form and yet in the middle of all its darkness, in the middle of all its emptiness, in the middle of vastness of nothing, the Bible says the Spirit of God, He wasn't just present. He didn't just exist, He hovered. Another word in Hebrew for hover is incubate. It's the same word when the mother chicken sits on her eggs. It's the Spirit of God, He incubated over the mess, the chaos, the darkness and the emptiness. And then God spoke. I want to speak this evening briefly about the renewing of the mind. I believe it's the missing component in walking and maintaining your deliverance. Jesus said whom the Son sets free is what? But He also said you shall know the truth. You don't get all freedom from the touch of Jesus. You get some freedom from the teachings of Jesus. You don't get all freedom by coming to Jesus. You get some freedom by growing in Jesus. See when the devil comes into your life, he doesn't come only to destroy your life. He also comes to build a mindset called a stronghold. That even when he exits, you're still in torment and still in pain as though you're in bondage. I can prove it to you. When Israel exited Egypt, they were still slaves. They were no longer in the bondage of Pharaoh, but the bondage of Pharaoh was still in them. They died like slaves, though they were free. Egyptians are not the only one that tormented them on the level of the mind. Your sickness does the same thing to you. Depression does the same thing. Anxiety does the same thing. Growing up in poverty does the same thing. It steps into the mind and it builds a stronghold that even after the demon exits, you're still suffering and hurting, not because you were not free, but because you did not experience a breaking of the stronghold or as the Bible calls, renewing 
of the mind. My goal is not to hype you up and my goal is not to feed you with junk right now. I'm gonna tell you the way things are. I like to shoot straight. Amen. And I'm not gonna talk about things that don't exist and pretend the stuff don't happen because on day zero the Bible says there was darkness, there was void and there was no form and maybe that's where you are right now. Maybe your life can be summarized in these three words that there is darkness, there is emptiness and there is no form. Yet you're a Christian. Yet the Spirit of God lives inside of you and maybe you're looking at your life and saying how could it be? How could I still be tormented if greater is He who is in the world lives in me? How could I still suffer if by His stripes on the cross I've been healed? Why is my life falling apart and I am in suffering right now though I know the promises of God and I have the Holy Spirit. I want to speak today to those who are in verse 2. If you are taking notes and I believe in taking notes, I want you to write this down. Day zero. Day zero is when you're moving from having the Holy Spirit to allowing the Holy Spirit to incubate you. God did not create anything on day one until the Holy Spirit incubated the darkness, the void and the emptiness. As a Christian you have the Holy Spirit but that's not what changes your life. What changes your life is when the Holy Spirit gets you. As a Christian Holy Spirit is present the Holy Spirit might not incubate you. Holy Spirit wants to incubate you, meaning Holy Spirit wants to have an intimacy with you even when you are on day zero in darkness, in void and in emptiness. Even when you're poor, even when you're hurting, even when you're sick, even when you're struggling. Many people say, I will postpone my intimacy with Holy Spirit once I get delivered, when I get blessed and this and that. But the Bible says God did not start doing anything until first the Spirit of God incubated the place. Don't let your sickness, don't let your demons, don't let your curses stop you away from developing an intimacy with the Holy Ghost that lives inside of you. Devil will lie to you and say because you're suffering, because you have torments, because you fall into the same sin, Holy Spirit doesn't want to do anything to do with you. But I want to slap the devil today right in his face and say in verse 2, in the beginning in the Bible, God made it very clear. You can be in darkness, you can be in struggle and the Spirit of God is still going to inhabit and incubate your life. Come on somebody. Devil, you're afraid because you know the moment me and the Holy Spirit get close, your darkness, your void will expire and God will bring day one into my life. Can somebody say amen? amen. Whatever situation you are in right now, develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You may not see anything right away but in intimacy with the Holy Spirit, your life will begin to unwrap. Day zero is when you go from having the Holy Spirit to Holy Spirit having you. You may say Vlad what is the difference? Everyone gets the Holy Spirit by salvation. Everyone. But Holy Spirit gets us by surrender. You get the Holy Spirit when you get saved. Holy Spirit gets you when you surrender. And for those of you who say, well I have the Holy Spirit, that means that I'm going to live in power. Not really. You also have flesh. It doesn't mean that you will live in sin. It's not who you have. It's who you yield to. 
you can have flesh and live in righteousness because you refuse to yield to the flesh that you got and you can have Holy Spirit and live in sin because you refuse to yield to the Holy Spirit that you got and so day zero is saying I'm gonna cut away excuses that say that you know what because I have this and that and that I cannot yield to the Holy Spirit yield to the Holy Spirit even if you got this that and that and say Holy Spirit I'm a mess but that's all I got help me help me my God day zero is when you yield to the Holy Spirit and he incubates you he he sits on you his warmth his love his presence begins to cover you you're still in the same situation your ministry is still the same your children are still crazy your husband still needs deliverance or your wife still needs help your finances are not there where you're supposed to be but you're building intimacy with the Holy Spirit the devil says listen get the Holy Spirit away why he doesn't like people like you but you say devil in the beginning God made it very clear the Holy Spirit likes messy crazy situations he did not abandon the earth he's not gonna abandon me he did not abandon the planet he's not gonna abandon me he's gonna stay with me as long as I stay with him he's gonna keep me work and miracles will happen miracles will happen after day zero was a day one day zero is yielding to the Holy Spirit day one the Bible says on day one God spoke to the darkness and said what did God say well, I can't hear you what did God say God said let there be light and when I was younger I always assumed this when God said let there be light that the Sun appeared and so as, a, as I was younger I didn't read the Bible very thoroughly I would say this that God made the Sun on day one because on the day one God created the light on day one God said let there be light right but the problem is if you read the Bible carefully God made the Sun and the moon and the stars on which day just repeat the same thing that you hear people are shouting so it make you look like you know the Bible <laughs> all right all right <laughs> so he created the Sun on day I'm helping you now he created on the day four so I, I am not a like a very high IQ super intelligent person but I have a question I don't have a PhD but I have a question if you made the light on day one and the Sun came on day four where did the light come from you gotta read the Bible with your head because a lot of people they forget their head when they read the Bible when I read the Bible and I used to read help people like oh thank you Jesus hallelujah my God praise God day four the Sun came in but then I ask a question why where did the light come from on day one if there was no Sun see God in the first page before you get to the Gospels before you get anywhere God reveals how he operates God reveals how he operates and this is how God operates the world you and I live in you need the Sun to have the light the world God operates which is the world of faith you need the light to get the Sun the world we operate when you get a child you become a father the world God operates God calls Abraham a father and then years later he got the Sun in the world we operate in you get crowned as a king you become a king God calls David a king and only years later he gets the crown the world we operate in you first do right works and then you become righteous the world God operates you become righteous so you can do right works and in the beginning God reveals how he operates that he doesn't change your life first he changes your mind God does not bring the Sun into your life first he brings the light in your mind first 
and this is where the question appears but I cannot have a light in here if there is no sun in here I cannot have peace in here I cannot have freedom in here if there is life if my life doesn't have a change but God says I don't operate like you do I operate differently where does the light come from it comes from God said God wants us to give his word that kind of priority that we give to the physical eyes and to what we see with our physical eyes God says I want you to give such a priority to my revelation to my dream to my vision in your life that it actually produces something so equal that as though you have a sun a moon and the stars in your life this is what faith is called Hebrews 11 1 it says this the for faith is the substance the word substance in Hebrew in Greek because New Testament was written in Greek it says is hypostosis meaning title deed substance is not a feeling substance is a is something that is concrete it's something real a title deed when you have a title deed for a land it's yours you are the owner of that and God says that faith is not like oh I, I, I hope faith is not hoping faith is heavy before you get it faith is having before you get it day one God brings light but there is no sun that light comes from his word God wants to bring a day one in your life today in Jesus name God wants to release his word into your life and that word wants to create light inside of your soul today maybe that word is that you will be healed in Jesus name and you don't look to symptoms leave before you receive and receive the light that I am healed in Jesus name it doesn't mean you stop taking medicine it doesn't mean that you ignore the symptoms it simply means you don't let the symptoms influence you because you're under influence of some other bigger more real something that holds the heaven and the earth something that got released from God's mouth and it holds the universe it sure can hold your health can somebody say amen day one is when you get the light when you get God's word inside of your heart when you get the dream when you get faith you get excited as a pastor when God gives you a dream for ministry as a, as a parent when God shows you a revelation about your children how they they will serve God Maybe you're battling with sickness, you get a revelation that by His stripes I am healed and you know it, that you know, that you know, that you know, you're healed. That's day one. Day zero is I'm working with Holy Spirit. Day one is God's Word is released into my life and it becomes so real that it actually brings me light. It separates darkness from inside of me. I'm walking as though I'm having it. See like with Hungry Generation, what we see today physically we've been carrying it right here for many years it only manifested just a few years ago but we carried it here what you don't see right now is there is a Toyota Center in Kenwick that we carry right here we're carrying that thing carrying that baby and one day we will have race to deliver at Toyota Center You know we meet at that beautiful facility on the Sylvester Street but we're carrying something like this I don't want to say this because we have people represented something like this in here for our Sunday morning services we prophesy over that every single week we speak over that and one day you will come to an average service in hungry generation like this and you will say wow look at that you will come on our day four but right now we're on day one when you're pregnant nobody knows you got a child but you already got a child you didn't get a child when the child came out you got a child when you conceived 
and see God wants you to get conception by his word by his promise by his dream by a revelation by a prophecy when he releases it in your word you catch it and you say God I believe your word like Mary said I believe your word let it be to me according to your promise let it be to me according to your word and something kicks in inside of you and you become a possessor of the promise because somebody give God some praise right now if you got a word from God get up on your feet and give God some praise right now if you got a dream from God get up on your feet and give God some praise right now if you're pregnant with something bigger than your reality give God some praise right now hallelujah 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 when you get a dream when you get a promise what it does is it gives you freedom for your mind not to be imprisoned by your reality your life is in your reality your mind is somewhere else in the clouds your life is in the reality but your mind is in the Word of God when you get a dream you are free there is separation from darkness and light meaning your mind is separated from the reality your body is in the reality your finances is in the reality your family is in the reality you are in right now you are separated on the day one hallelujah hallelujah and you're walking you're walking in that situation the other person is walking you may take a seat if you want to I'm standing you can stand too if you want no condemnation to those who stand in Jesus name <laughs> when you're walking in the dream in the faith what happens is a separation and they want God separated God separates you from your reality you know how that happens you stop calling cancer yours so many people have adopted arthritis it's like their sixth child my arthritis my my when did they became yours when your mind went to it your body might have an arthritis make sure it's not in your mind your body might have cancer right now but make sure your mind is in the word of God that cancer even if it doesn't get healed it will die when you die and you will have a brand new life which means your mind should not be subjected to your reality it should be free to be in the word of God it should have a light on day one even if there is no healing manifesting yet my God walk in your faith I want to challenge you right now may God deliver you in your mind from your reality my Bible makes me to understand God wants us to be under the mighty hand of our sickness. No, under the mighty hand of our bank report, under the mighty hand of God. That means I may not change my situation right now. I may not be able to do anything about the fact that there is no sun. But I can receive the word that comes from God. And contrary to my situation, contrary to my symptoms, contrary to what I've tried and I failed in, I say, God, I received the light. I can't explain why I have the light, except the fact that both of my feet are planted on the word of God. And I am expecting a miracle from God. But even if it's not coming right now, I have the light. Because I have the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your mind for a second. Father in the name of Jesus, bring the light in the mind. My God, I pray right now, separate the mind from the darkness. My God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, bring day one. I pray for those who specially prayed for healing and that, that, that sickness is already creeped in inside. I pray for those like Titanic, they're sinking because their world is coming inside of them. Lord, as a Christian's father, you call us not to conform to our situation. You call us to renew our mind by your word, God. I pray, deliver that mind right now in the name of Jesus. I break every spirit of anxiety. I break every spirit of depression. I break every intrusive thoughts right now now every phobia and fear every flood of negative thoughts I command you right now in Jesus mighty name be free in your mind be free in your spirit in Jesus mighty name day zero is we work with Holy Spirit 
day one is the word of God brings light in here day two somebody say day two on day two I want you to see what begins to happen is God separates the water from the sky and then beginning with day three he begins to separate the land from the water somebody say formation somebody say formation so the first day is surrender to the Holy Spirit the second day is we get illumination from the Word of God but a third day is the day of formation I want you to see on second day God did not bring the Sun on second day God did not bring the stars what he did is he started to form the earth second day is the most painful day in your life because the things you dream of are not coming instead what's coming is two things trials and God is asking you to sacrifice something because God is building forming within you something that he could eventually feel and fulfill his word in day two is God forming you God separates the water from the land meaning he begins to separate you from becoming an emotionally driven person he builds your character he builds your resilience he builds your spine he makes you a conqueror when your life is nothing but defeat God builds that spirit in Joshua and God says this about Joshua he says he has a different spirit everyone is in the same problem but he looks at the mountain he sees opportunities everybody looks at the mountain and they see obstacles and God says that is a formed man day two day two when God forms you in the trials that kill people, destroy people, but it makes you stronger. There were three people on the cross. Not everyone was there because they sacrificed to God. Some were there because they lived in sin. Some died because of that cross, but Jesus came back. That cross didn't destroy him. There were two people in jail it was Samson and there was one more in jail it was Joseph and after Joseph went through jail Joseph came out better but when Samson went through jail he came out dead your situation is not like the situation of other people your situation is to prepare you for the new level in life your situation is not like the situation of other people your situation is for the glory of God People will look at you and say, I am in sin and I am in that situation. But you will look at them and say, listen, I might be on the cross, but I'm not here because I lived in sin. It's because I obey God and I will not die on this cross because my situation is to prepare me for the new level I have in God. I believe in that in Jesus name. If you do give God some praise right now. If you do give God some praise right now, if you feel like God is forming you, if you feel like God is preparing you, if you feel like whatever you're going through is just a preparation for the new season in life, give God some praise right now. Somebody shout, I'm being formed. The problem is when you're being formed, it hurts. When you're being formed it's because you're actually in discouragement being disappointed and you're in the delay and you're being defeated when you're being formed it's never on the stage it's always in a battle when you're being formed it's when God separates the water from the land but you really need the sun you really need the moon you really man you, you really have to have a word for the stars and what God doesn't bring those stars he just begins to bring separation you're like God you're not doing anything in my life and God says hang in there hun sunshine because I am on day two with you and I am forming you oh when Joseph was sold by his brothers from the human perspective it looked like he's getting away from his destiny from God's perspective he was getting closer when he got betrayed and falsely accused and went to jail it looks like he went 
down but sometimes being down is actually being closer and God didn't care whether it's up and down God cared are you getting closer and see what you're looking at is that you're down God says but you're closer I'm down God I am already in jail I've been sold as a slave and now I'm a prisoner with a bad reputation and God says you're down because I am forming you but you're actually way closer because you're in jail of the Pharaoh before you were in the house of the Potiphar you had a high position but you were further from the palace than when you are in prison see God doesn't look things the way you look at sometimes and when you are on day two things don't look good things look like they go down things like they're, they're getting worse the sickness is worsening things are getting worse but you don't understand God is still working he's separating the water from the land he's making you solid he's making you stable he's making you grow a spine he makes you to stand at both of your feet and if everybody forsakes you you will still stand and know that God is with you my God He's forming you. He's forming you. I feel the word burning in my spirit for somebody here. You're on day two. You're saying, God, where is the fulfillment of the word? But God is developing within you a spine. He's developing within you that, that persistence, that resilient spirit. He's developing within that you're not easily swayed by the criticism or by the compliments. That you are anchored. And you cannot be anchored when you're successful. You gotta be only anchored when trials tribulations and temptations I am being formed somebody say I'm being formed day zero is surrender day one is God's Word coming and creating light in me day two is God forming me somebody say day three day three is God filling me the Bible says on day three the oceans had fish the skies the land started to produce trees meaning there what started to happen is there was filling of God and what he formed when God forms he always wants to fill what he forms he doesn't just want you to be a strong Christian he wants you to be a filled Christian but this is the problem is many times we say Lord until you fulfill your word I am not gonna be filled but the Lord wants your heart to be filled by his presence before your life sees fulfillment of his promise the Lord wants your heart to be filled with his presence before your life sees fulfillment of his promise when Samuel was disappointed in the king he anointed and he wept all night the Lord came to Samuel and says this stop crying fill your horn with oil and go to Bethlehem I found a man after my heart you're weeping over something that is over but what I have next is amazing but you can't go to the next until you leave your ex you can't step into day four until you get filled on day three. You can't step into something new. Jesus says, shake off the dust from the places you got rejected. From the situations you got mistreated. Jesus says, shake it off and go into the next city as though it never happened. You gotta get filled. Filled with faith. Filled with Holy Ghost. Filled with fire of God. Filled with anointing of God. Filled again. Somebody's Lord fill me. Somebody say Lord fill me. Lord fill me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with your presence God. Fill me Holy Ghost. Lord fill me. Lord fill me. Lord fill me. Lord fill me before you fulfill your word. Lord fill me before you fulfill your promise before I see the fulfillment of my dreams God that I don't rely on the fulfillment of my dreams but I rely on the Holy Ghost because the Spirit of God filled me on day three I didn't see what I believed until day four but I did not need to wait till day four to get filled by the Holy Ghost Jesus said to the disciples you will go into all the world and preach the gospel 
He said, you will shake the world with the gospel. There will be a fulfillment of that promise. But you know what disciples did before they saw day four in their life? They waited to be filled. And when they got filled, they became unstoppable. When they got filled, they became dangerous. Sometimes when we talk to sick people, when we talk to hurting people, when we talk to people who are in poverty, you're seeing one thing. That, and that's the problem. It's not the sickness. It's the emptiness the sickness has brought. You see negativity speaking. You see the hurt speaking. Because your mouth speaks from what your heart is filled with. And then there's others that you see and they have a disease and they have a sickness. But they open their mouth and life comes out. You feel like you're talking, standing in the presence of God. They're in a wheelchair, but you feel like you're standing in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they're not waiting till day four when God fulfills. They say, God, fill me now. Fill me now. You have to be filled with His presence. You have to be filled with His glory. Can somebody say amen? Day zero is surrender to the Holy Spirit. Day one is the Word of God bringing light. It separates me from reality. Day two is God taking me through the test when I don't see nothing happening and through that my, my, my character is being formed. God develops a spirit of a conqueror. Day three is God says, let me fill you. Before I fulfill my Word, what will carry you through is the filling of me, my filling of you. Some of you, you're running on empty. I believe the Lord wants to fill you till it overflows. Day four is God fulfilling His Word. So forming, filling, fulfilling His Word. Day four, there are some people in this room, you don't know, but God switched the days when you stepped into this auditorium today. I want to make an announcement. Somebody, you don't even realize, you stepped into your day four. Where you will see the things you believed in. Where you, be, you will see the things you fasted for. Where God will create the sun. Where God will create the stars. And where God will create the moon. And you will not only have light from your faith, but you will have light from your reality. Your reality will line up to your revelation. Your situation will line up to your vision. What you're going through is going to line up to what you believe. And today is the day of miracles. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. Today is somebody's day. If you want it to be your day, I would get up on my feet and give God some praise. If I want it to be my day, I will say, God, give me this day, my daily bread. Give me this day, my daily bread. God, today is the day you have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of freedom and today is the day of deliverance. Give God some praise right now. Lift your voice 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Give God some praise right now. Hallelujah. You may take your seat. You know, we believed that one day we will see conferences as such for many years. Today we see that I'm standing in my day four. Some of you, you're stepping into your day four today. When you're going to be prayed for and touched in the prayer line, the Holy Spirit is going to manifest the glory. But can I give you just a little tip and suggestion? On day four, God said, it is good. Never compare your earth with someone's heaven. Watch this. When God said it is good, God was in heaven watching the earth. God had every reason to look at the earth and say, this sucks. This is so messed up. Man, they don't even have golden streets. They don't even have a throne. They don't have angels. They're, man, I don't even want to look at it, it's so horrible. I love this about God, is God doesn't compare where He's at 
to where he's looking at when you come to your church on Sunday don't look at your church and say this sucks because you compare it to what you saw race to deliver look at what God is doing in your church and say this is good it's not all but it's good this is not all that God is gonna do but this is good one person got saved that is good somebody's pinky got healed this is good this is good when you wake up in the in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror don't say ah oh, you fat ugly ball thing you look at that and you say you know what some days you look great and some days you look amazing and today is that day somebody say it is good don't compare because this is what happens when you compare when you compare your earth with someone's heaven it will lead you to complaining and complaining kills the next day because there's still day five there is still day six there is still day seven anytime you complain you kill God's creative process learn to celebrate the little that you have I sometimes go to conferences other conferences you know and then I come back home to Tri cities and our city doesn't you know look maybe as great as other cities but at least we don't have traffic rain and liberals but praise be to God this is good <laughs> so I guess that's that's a good thing about our city but I come back you know to our facility not this facility but the one you know back home uh, and you know you're like Ugh, the carpet this doesn't look good the lights are bad and then every team member begins to look like oh you guys are just so messed up what demons are you having right now you so you, you begin to look at your spouse and you begin to look at everything your car you see the dance you see everything is wrong and then you begin to look down and you say man this is so horrible but God didn't do that even though he had the reason to nor should you never compare your day with somebody else's we are all on a different journey with the Lord. Don't compare what's happening here to your ministry and begin to despise the day of small beginnings. Look at what God does even if it's a small thing and say, God, I thank you. God, you're a good God. You're a faithful God and I will celebrate your goodness. And when you do that, God says a day five is coming. And day five, God's going to do greater things. And day six, God will do such a powerful things that He will say, it is very good and then there will be day seven and then God will create Eve and God, then God will continue to create what I want to tell you is this if you continue to celebrate what God is doing he will continue to do what he's doing if you continue to make Jesus the most important person even when you experience breakthrough he will continue bring more breakthrough if you leave God and you say God I'm done with you when you get your breakthrough God says I am done with you as well keep the breakthrough but your life ends on day four you got a miracle but listen to this you didn't experience miracles many people got a miracle but because they abandoned God after their miracle they're like well I'm not sick no more I don't need to go anywhere to the conference and I don't need to pray no more I don't need to fast no more why because the demon is no longer tormenting me but you still have a destiny to fulfill when you're sick when you're hurting when you're suffering you're fasting but after you're finished with all of that and God gives you breakthrough God still wants to fill you on day five and six why because there is still destiny to fulfill he has for you Come on somebody. Amen. Thank you Lord for your mercy and your favor. Our time is left already. I want, to, I want you to rise to your feet. How many of you believe that today this, this word was for you? Let me just pray over you. Father in the name of Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit. I ask you for every person that right now feels like the verse 2 in the Bible. I pray for relationship with you Holy Spirit. Lord I pray that this is not going to be something they scream and say yes to but God they will they will go deep inside of their heart God. I can deliver this word but only you can plant that word into the hearts of people Lord and I pray right now the precious Holy Spirit you will plant that heart, plant that word in their soul and in their heart. Come and f- 
fill us with your presence as we give you the praise. Lord, we are your temple. For you alone we wait. Holy Spirit, welcome in this place. Every hand raised to the Lord. Close your eyes. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you today. Fill us with your presence as we give you the praise. Although we are your temple, we Holy Spirit. to the Holy Spirit. Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you are in this room tonight, and maybe you were invited by a friend, or perhaps you came for deliverance or healing, maybe somebody dragged you here. Maybe you came with a group of other people because you know there will be other people you can mingle, connect, hook up. The most important decision and the greatest miracle you can experience in your life is the salvation of your soul. You can be healed and go to hell. You can be healthy and go to hell. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. I want to call you today to, the, to someone who died for you on the cross. Someone who loved the wretched you so much that he gave his life for you. And this someone is Jesus and he said, nobody can come to the Father without me. You can go to heaven without having a car, without having a house or a degree, but you cannot go to heaven without Jesus. Being a Catholic doesn't save you. Being, going to a Christian church doesn't save you. Doing good works doesn't save you. What saves you is repentance from your sin and faith in Jesus Christ. Having a mama and a daddy who is a believer and a pastor doesn't bring you closer to God. You need to make your own decision to give your life to Jesus Christ. Today I invite you to turn your back on the devil. I invite you to give your life to Jesus Christ and run from sin and run from hell as from a plague. I'm gonna count to three and when I do so I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand I'm gonna ask you to quickly run from your seat and meet me right here one hell is hot two eternal is very long three Jesus is the only way to salvation quickly quickly if you need to get right with God come out of your seat whatever you're on the aisle whatever you're in the back whatever you are if God is knocking on your heart quickly quickly run from your seat and come to the front and we're gonna pray with you quickly 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 tomorrow will be too late today is the day of salvation today is the right day to get right with God today is the day to surrender your life to Jesus today is the day to abandon the devil I'm going to wait for 30 more seconds. Quickly, quickly, if the Lord is knocking on your heart, if you brought a friend with you and you know they need to get right with God, you can come with them, but come. Friends, don't let friends go to hell. Jesus is the only way to salvation. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to new life. Come. It's time to leave those drugs. It's time to leave those cigarettes. It's time to leave sleeping with your girlfriend. It's time to leave that lifestyle of sin and run to Jesus and run to Jesus and run to Jesus there's few more there's few more quickly 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 just come we're waiting for you if you're watching us online right now I ask you that right there as you're watching us on YouTube or on Facebook Jesus is there in your room Jesus is there in your workplace and he wants to come inside of your heart 
He, he doesn't want to be a cross on your neck. He wants to live as a savior in your heart. No matter what your situation, your position in the society, in community or your workplace. Jesus is the only savior. Jesus is the only one who rose from the dead and he wants to rise you up from your sin. You can comment below. Our moderators will get hold of you so that you can also be a part of the prayer that I'm going to pray in just a moment. You can comment below if you want to get right with God. Now that everybody's here, everybody here that, that came, those of you who came to the altar, I want you to raise your hand. Those of you who came to the altar to give your life to the Lord, I want you to raise your hand. And I want you to keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. You're going to pray with me right now. I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say this louder. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I am a sinner. I'm a rebellious one. I am dead in sin. But I come to your mercy. And Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Please help me. Please save me. Forgive me all my sins. And wash me with your blood. I surrender my life of sin, my life of rebellion. And I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. Deliver me, heal me, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I receive your gift of forgiveness and your forgiveness of eternal life right now in Jesus name amen amen church I want you to put your hands together for each one of them come on you can do better than that you can do better than that wait hold on hold on hold on hold on we want to as a team we want to take you right now to just pray for you a little bit more if you're watching us or if you have a phone you can text in if you if you got prayed that prayer you're watching us on live stream you can text in that prayer and right now our team will follow i want you to follow glenn and glenn is going to wave his hand and so church as they do so i want you to give your hand a round of applause with them for each one of them come on church you can do better than that thank you for watching this content i know this was a blessing to you we would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.